everybody, welcome to the first hashtag Ask Gary V. I think it's the first one, but I actually do think I tried to do this once before. I feel like I've got the team now in place to actually do this more often. So here we go. So, you know, the long tail just moving the goalposts is an interesting kind of question. You're asking a very interesting question of a very specific character, meaning, I am so long term, I'm so by the Jets that the stuff in between is less important. Every decision I make from VaynerMedia to deciding to write books to speaking to doing this right now is predicated on how does that chess move to me actually owning the Jets one day. I'll tell you what what I think about this. I understand the thesis and the question and I, though tone is often lost on Twitter, I think I know where you're going which is like cool, you can have a big picture but if you're not executing properly in the short term, do you actually get there? Um, To me it's actually the reverse. I find that one of the biggest reasons I've been able to build big businesses, make smart investments, I'm now on my second business that I've operated from a small base to a huge base in one second is because when you have a big picture in mind, a North Star, the long term vision, something interesting happens and I'm going to get close here Joe. You stop, you stop stressing the dumb little shits day in and day out because you're playing the big game. And so what happens is the short term angst, which is really the friction of growth, actually becomes a little bit more manageable, a little easier to deal with. And I have found by having those big visions, I'm moving the short goalpost moves quicker, faster, more importantly. And so, you know, I'm one of these pro go all in, deep, big long term vision calculate towards it at all times and you'll find that being 85% effective in your short term moves because you're 110% effective and focused on your long term goal is actually moving you quicker along the way. Look did you talk? I feel like the first fax owner every day of my life. Can you imagine how I feel? I'm usually really at the forefront of these things. And so, um, you know, I'm going to give you a very simple piece of advice. I try not to convert anyone from all the pieces of content, from all the t-shirts we make, show Zach, they'll like that he made the t-shirt, from all the things I do, the quote cards, the, the keynotes, the books, the ranting and raving, these videos, truth is, I don't give a crap about converting one person. I'm only speaking to the converted. And so if your market hasn't moved yet and they don't believe in fax machines and you're trying to sell a fax machine, don't try to convince somebody to buy a fax machine. Go find the people that already have bought into the fax machine and just sell it to them. Because if you're too early in a theory or a business where nobody has bought in, you've lost. So for everybody who thinks I'm Nostradamus or I'm far ahead, the truth is I'm not far ahead. I'm just practical and realize there's enough scale in the reality of 2014 right now marketing. There's enough people buying in to make it practical. And there was even enough in 2009 when I started VaynerMedia with AJ when nobody thought I was ready or the market was ready or anybody was ready. There was just enough for us to actually build a business and then we grew into it. We, we skated to where the puck was going to be as that classic statement is. And so, you know, that's my answer. You know, don't try to convert anybody. Don't waste energy on people that can't consume it. Just go on the full offense on the people that have already bought it. As building audiences on Pinterest and YouTube with Facebook dark posts is the wrong strategy in a world where you can build YouTube audience with pre-rolls at five to seven cents a view and Pinterest is about 20 seconds away from their ad platform so my answer to you is it's nice to try to siphon and I do think Facebook dark post would probably be the most effective besides the native way to do it but if you're trying to build YouTube and Pinterest audience I highly recommend doing it with the native ad platforms within those two principal parties. Betty Mo, when I buy the New York Jets, I will become the kind of owner that makes Mark Cuban and Jerry Jones seem passive. Not only will I probably touch 
personnel decisions, there's a dark horse chance that you'll hear. And starting at wide receiver number five, Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, I will reshape the mold of ownership in American sports history. Drag him, you know, honestly, I, I don't know why Steve, show him. I don't know why Steve picked this question because the truth is there's not enough context. How do we apply it to your music world? I don't know, like what do you do? Do you like put on shows? It's easy. Do you, do you sell t-shirts or bands? Easy. Do you try to resell music? A little tricky. I mean, I'll need a little more context. I'm gonna allow you to retweet with more context and we'll get you back on the show. Kev, first of all, I'm so ridiculously jealous that you're 21. It makes me want to vomit on myself. Uh, I always say that I'd give up everything to be 21, and I mean it. The knowledge would be tough to give up, but I think I mean it. Time is the asset. Uh, you know, look, I, uh, I wrote a piece about what I would do if I was a real estate agent on LinkedIn about Twitter. Be in the links. Searching on Twitter is gold, and then just putting out content. Uh, there was some guy early on in, in 2009 when I wrote Crush It, who completely jumped on it and crushed it as a real estate agent, putting like a flip cam on his car while he drove. But the truth is, it's putting out content and it's using Twitter as an offense. Enjoy. Evan. You're not selling a hard product, and I paid attention to how you've frameworked your question, but the truth is, ultimately, Evan, I think, you're trying to play chess to get a donation. I will tell you that the number one sector in social media that has most struggled, in my opinion, is nonprofit and NGO. The amount of people, because I have over a million followers on Twitter, that hit me up every day, every day, 15 people a day on Twitter, that hit me up for, can you give to charity? Can you retweet this for our charity? Without even saying hello. Can you romance a girl? I mean, it makes no sense. And so the way you do it, the way you sell that culture is, look, there's charity water as the gold standard, in my opinion, of heavy storytelling through content. I would look at that as a model. It's about putting out good content. It's about engaging with people around their issues. It's searching the terms, much like the last question, around whatever you're trying to solve and jumping into conversations. It's about effort instead of, you know, there's an entitlement on the nonprofit NGO space that needs to be broken for them to be successful in an open, transparent, one-on-one world where it's not guilting or relying on what people think they have to give. I had dinner last night with the CEO of a major NGO nonprofit and I said, uh, I feel great giving back. And he said, no, stop. Get rid of the word back. It's just good giving. By saying giving back, it's like you've taken something. And it really was powerful and so, I think we need to get to a place where it's not what's expected, it's what's appreciated, and that can be completely executed on social better than any other place, because it's transparent, it's open, get into conversations, show the effort, romance a girl, execute. My friends, I'm excited about this. As you can see, there's very attractive people associated with this organization, and I think we're gonna be doing it more often, especially because the man behind the mic, DRock, is now here, and I feel like we've got this. I will be tweeting out more questions. Use the hashtag anytime you want, you know, and, uh, and I'll see you later.